Hey there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a Land Cruiser 100 Series, this one from 1998, with just 113,000 original kilometers, and this is a great truck. This one was bought from auction for export over to the USA. It already has an owner, so I'm sorry you guys don't get a chance to own this, but it is quite the survivor. It has very clean interior, very clean exterior, low mileage, and is mechanically sound. So we'll just switch off the engine for the rest of the report. I'll just give you a little listen. Okay. And this is the 24 valve version of the 1HD engine. So uh, one of the all time great Toyota engines, it's a diesel engine, 4.2 liter electronic fuel injection and uh, turbocharger. These things are such a peach to drive, and I kind of wish that they were available in more vehicles. In fact, the buses here in Japan use the same engine, like the, the big buses, like the, or not the big ones like the coaches, but the almost big ones like the um, Toyota... Jeez, what's the name of that now? Coaster? The Toyota Coaster uses this engine. Uh, time of belt change at 101, 732 kilometers, so recent... Um, I guess that was four years ago now, but in the last four years, the car has driven 12,000 kilometers, so pretty low mileage. It's a dual battery version with what looks like new batteries, and uh, that's about it. The car is all in original condition, and when I say it's a survivor, that means that nothing has been refreshed or restored in this, but everything is kept in extremely good condition. So you're going to see as I walk around the vehicle how nice this thing is. Now, before we get into that, let's check the auction inspection sheet. And this is a, a, basically I'm checking the condition of the car against the auction inspection sheet. And I'd say that this one is fairly accurate. There's maybe a couple of things here and there that's missed, but uh, I'll get into those. So it comes from 1998, this Land Cruiser. This is the, uh, registered as a van, so a commercial vehicle. And they kind of cheated on taxes a little bit, but it's very common. I'll, I'll tell you that in a second here. It's a VX Limited. Auction rate 4, interior B, and the sales points are purchased from user, one owner, original Navi with digital TV tuner and reverse camera. As well, this is a diesel vehicle. It comes with an owner's manual, history papers, spare key, and it has tires inside the vehicle. The camping kit is as is. I mark this in yellow because anything that's important I'll mark in yellow. The camping kit, and I'm just going to get into this right now. You can pretend that you're and this is what I'm talking about with the cheating. You can pretend that your Land Cruiser is a camper and this will give you much cheaper insurance. And technically you're registering it in the same category that, let's see, ambulances, fire trucks, power shovels, these types of vehicles are. Or like snow, snow plow <laughs> or camper or Land Cruiser with a kit in the back. Now, there are these companies that make kits that you can put into your Land Cruiser so that you can qualify as a camping car and get lower registration. The reason why this is important is because tax in Japan is based off of engine size and weight of the vehicle, and Land Cruisers are not lightweight vehicles. So to get it, you need a bed. So here's your bed. There are a bunch of platforms that you basically lay out to sleep on. You need cabinets. There's your cabinet. You need a stove. There it is. And you need a sink. Here's your sink. <laughs> and now you're ready to go camping. And uh, yeah, you can save several hundred dollars a year, which will add up over time. So a lot of people do this. Uh, you can't get away with it anymore. They have a new regulation as of like six years ago or so that you need like 150 centimeters between the bottom floor and the top floor in order to register for a camper. I actually don't know the exact size, but it's something like that. And now that we've seen the rear then, I'm not going to go take a look at it again, so we're just kind of moving around in the report a little bit here, but uh, um, this has no rust or anything on it, and the back section here, the paint is all good, and no damages, no damage to the hinge area here, like it has been rear-ended. And the spare tire here is the original spare tire that came on the car, so you're going to need to replace that. This comes from 1998, has the date on it right over here. Okay, back to the auction inspection sheet. Sorry, we're jumping around a bit. Okay, so for the report here from the inspector, it says the left side power folding mirror doesn't work, but it worked for me, so it might be intermittent. 
underside has surface rust, which I'm going to show you right now. This is about what to expect when you see underside surface rust. There is some variance from one car to the next, but you see there's just a little bit there, mostly all very immaculately clean, a little bit of surface stuff. If you want this vehicle to run for another 20 or 25 years, which I think it can, um, just go in the underside and brush off any of the rust and then repaint it so it's not going to rust again. There's certain paint that you can use to seal from rust as well. Interior is dirty and wear. It's actually pretty clean and barely worn. Winter tires on it. Um, those need to be replaced. They don't have very much tread left on them. Hood damper doesn't work, hence why it was closed at the beginning of the video, and very small scratches, small dents. The body is almost perfect. Get my shadow out of there. Has some A1s in some places, which in this case are rock chips that most of them have been touched up with a touch-up paint. So, a very clean 100 series Land Cruiser. And the 100 went, I don't know the exact date, but I think this is the first year of them, 1998. And I think they probably went until like 2008 or so. The Land Cruisers tend to have a longer product cycle than most vehicles because people just continue buying them. And we're cur currently on the 300 series. So there was the, let's see if I can get this right, of the luxury versions... Um, there's two versions of the Land Cruiser. There's the industrial ones, the 40 series and the 70 series. That's the 70 over there. Then there are the luxury versions, which were the 50 series, 60, 80, 100, 200, and 300. So I guess this one's right in the middle, isn't it? Nowadays, this is a classic vehicle, and it, it honestly it doesn't feel that modern. It's 25 years old. It's a, a classic truck, but they're known and they're bought because they are dependable. They have the Land Cruiser name. We're in a forest here, which is kind of natural for a Land Cruiser. And um, they're just incredibly cool. Hold their resale value. You can buy one and then in the future potentially sell them for a higher price. I love them. And I'm very much in the market. I say this all of the time. We couldn't get on the wait list for the 300 series or the 70 series that just came out. So I'm a little bit bummed and I don't know what I'm going to do now. Okay, so we still have glass headlights here. The interiors have faded just a little bit, but for the most part, they're quite clear and nice. There is some fade on this grill, so you can see a little bit of like uh, lines and stuff in the grill. Front badge, same deal. Fog lights are made out of plastic, those have faded. Side panel, look at this. It is so nice, never been repainted. And uh, no dents in it, barely any scratches. I'll show you the chips. There's a chip here, that one not touched up. A little bit of a deterioration of the gasket there, but still has lots of life left in it. A little chip there. And this is all it has, it's like a few small chips like this. It's just crazy that someone can drive a vehicle for this long and put this little damage on it. Sometimes we sell cars that are five years old that are just like tons of scratches everywhere. I will say that the Land Cruiser paint holds up better than most paint. It's more like what I would consider a Lexus paint, so something like the Lexus LS uses, I think, the exact same paint as this for their pearl white. It's kind of a darker white. A few chips here. That's actually just dirt, but these ones here are chips. So one, two, three, four. Um, I think there was one up here. Did I point that out? Oh, five, six. And the rest just so clean. And like, look, I don't know if that looks as good in the video as it does in real life, but it really does look great. It has a very deep look to the color of the pearl. Onto the interior. I already showed you the back, but the video has these little <coughs> slots for people can click and see things. So I'm just gonna re-show you this. The little kit in here, the aftermarket kit. It's a sink inside there, a cabinet inside there, and I couldn't open this one. It's actually jammed, so I didn't see what's inside there. Bed platforms that can be laid out to sleep, and of course the Land Cruiser thing has a tailgate. Tailgates are awesome. Not super duper useful, just awesome. And uh, I guess hence why they stopped making them for the 300 series. And close this one off. Into the back seats. No bad smells inside. We know it's been smoked in, but it seems like the owner quit smoking at some point because there's absolutely no smell of cigarettes inside the vehicle and only very, very faint uh, remnants of ash inside the ashtray. It looks like it had maybe been there like 10 plus years ago. 
and has been cleaned out at that point. But once an ashtray has been smoked in, you don't get it back to original condition. Just clean and nice in here. Still has elasticity in these. A lot of times those will sag down. You get three cup holders here. So three here, two in here, and two up there. So a total of seven. I don't think you get any in the back. Yeah, no back seats in there either. So you usually would have a third row of seats. Rear controls for the heater. You can set how hot you want it back here. Low, high for the fan and temperature as well. You get places for four sets of sunglasses. So you can have your selection. How cool do you want to look? You can even set them up like at the front. That can be like the coolest sunglasses and then a little bit less cool as you go back. So maybe you're having a bad day and you're like, oh, I need those cool sunglasses. Let's, let's take out number one. Open up here. Door cards are good. Uh, as far as I can tell, these hold together really well, which is important on an older vehicle. The switch in here has something. So you, the switches, usually you push them down and then push them past the bump for the auto, right? So they're kind of dual stage switch, right? This one here, whatever that dual stage bump is, something's broken off of it. It still works, but it feels weird to use. The driver's seat has barely any wear on it. You can see in the bottom bolster there. And then a nice and clean carpets in here as well. The steering wheel, this is kind of funny. Somebody imported this steering wheel from a Lexus, I think. Or maybe from a later model Lexus that was available here in Japan. And then no crack in the wood. Uh, maybe it's not real wood, but it does feel really good. I like the feeling of this. It is le real leather and then maybe real wood. I don't think so though. Okay, coming up here, idle up. If you're 4 by 4 that's important, of course it is four-wheel drive. And yes, it still has the high gear ratio and the low gear ratio if you're going to be doing any um, <clears throat> difficult off-road. I have a little bit of a mark here for something that used to be glued on. Cup holders are inside here. You also get extra cup holders inside here, right there. But it is kind of weird to keep this open while driving. Uh, this thing here, get that camera out slots in here to become your cup holders. Otherwise, they can just rest there. This is a uh, very cheap feeling, like very lightweight uh, driver quarter. Came with the car. Okay, has an aftermarket screen that's been put in. Now, in the higher end versions, you got a touch screen for the HVAC, which is what you don't want because those screens go bad. This one has the manual versions, which you do want because these ones are gonna last forever. They are a very nice feeling as well. They don't feel like high end per se, but high quality, which is good. And then rear heat there. Here's what I'm talking about with the ash. You can see that it has been used but it's clean inside. And same thing goes for the cigarette lighter. And then we have an auxiliary cigarette lighter right there. And do we have another one in here? No, toll collection box and CD changer. Okay, the carpet over here is a little bit dirty, so it's gonna need to be cleaned, but it doesn't have the feeling like it's been cleaned by a dealer before auction. And so this is just how clean the previous owner was keeping it, which is a good sign. Uh, a little bit of a coffee stain there. Okay, and those are the tires that came in it, but they're not in good condition. Um, they're just an old tire. Actually, let's check the date for them. If you want them, we can swap them on. Uh, extra fee for that if you want. Oh, 2012. So yeah, 12 year old tire is done. You can't use those anymore. And although these ones are newer, they're a winter tire and they only have like 30% on the front and 50% on the rear. So I would bank for some new tires. And the aftermarket wheels have kind of gone bad. You can see the corrosion on there. So anyway, that's going to be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love seeing a nice clean vehicle like this, especially when it's one of my all-time favorite, these Land Cruisers, these zombie apocalypse, best case scenario vehicle. And so own one of these before stuff goes sideways. Let me tell you. Anyway, that's going to be all for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.